comrades and welcome back to Shanka show. Today I will try to answer a question from James and he's asking, Sergey, I have a question for you. Are you angry about your past? The reason I ask is that I know a lady who grew up in the USSR and somehow relocated to the UK before the USSR collapsed. She is a strong libertarian type and is really bitter about being forced to live her youth and her young adulthood in what she describes as totalitarian society. She is definitely looks back in anger. You don't seem to be like that, but do you have any feelings of resentment? Love you, Borg, as always. That's a little bit unusual question. Am I angry about the fact that I was born and that I was raised in the USSR? A short answer will be no, I'm not angry, but let's try to break it down. Well, first of all, let's be realistic. There's a, tons of places on this planet that could be way worse than totalitarian Soviet Union. You could be born somewhere in Africa, you can be born somewhere in Asia. There's a lot of really horrible places. So looking from that perspective, Soviet Union wasn't the worst place to be raised and spend your young adulthood. But of course, I guess I could be angry that I wasn't born like, I don't know, Donald Trump. You know, like I could be born with a silver spoon in my butt or in my mouth. I don't remember exactly how that expression goes, but you know, being raised in a rich family in a nice neighborhood in America, got a million dollar business loan from my daddy. So looking from that angle, I guess I could be angry. I wish I knew more information about this lady that was mentioned in the question. Because if she was maybe in her 40s or 50s when she finally managed to move out of Soviet Union and move to Britain, then she realized, hey, I wasted all these years and I couldn't express myself, I couldn't enjoy the freedom of speech and whatever. In my case, I was born in 1971, so I was 20 in 1991 when Soviet Union collapsed. So that was pretty much, I'm looking at it like a perfect timing. When I became kind of aware of the limits, like where the cage limits were, the cage fell down. So as a kid, you don't really realize a lot of things that adults know. You know, if, for example, if you go to the zoo and you you can watch, you know, monkeys, or like I would say bigger ones like chimpanzee or orangutans, especially like big predators like tigers or lions, you could tell that little cubs, they're happy. They run around, they play, but adults, they sad. They just sit there bored because... They know they trapped in the cages, they trapped in the zoo, but little cubs don't know about it. They don't know any better. So I was that little cub that I never noticed any problems pretty much till I became, you know, older person and then Soviet Union just disappeared. So from my personal experience, I had only one time when I was 19 years old probably something like that so that was around 1990 so right at the end of the soviet days i met some people from germany and they invited me to visit them in germany and i was so excited to go because it was the first time ever uh, i could go and visit other country and they were willing to help me to pay for tickets because that time was very expensive with the soviet income to travel to the other countries and the process of getting ready for traveling to the other country back in those days were so cumbersome, so difficult. So first of all, I needed an official invitation from my German friends. So they mailed me a letter with uh, information about them, their home address, and they, they invited me to stay with them, stuff like that. After that, I needed to take that invitation and go to the local office that issues passports for traveling abroad so every soviet citizen had a passport like inside inside passport you would say so soviet passport that one you get automatically when you turn 16 now if you want to go to the other country you need to apply for a different passport which is only for traveling 
So we had actually, you could have two passports, one inside passport, Soviet passport, another passport for traveling overseas. So when I went to that office, they told me it's not enough just an invitation. We also need a paper from your place of work. Uh, they need to sign that uh, you are permitted to travel to other countries in case, you know, I know some state secrets. So I went uh, to talk to HR, kind of would say, uh, human resources at my place of work. And over there, there was this old guy, former probably, I think it was he was a former KGB uh, officer who retired and he just worked a little bit as his HR because the company I worked for was actually, I can say, quite secretive. It was a called Post Box, Pachtovy Yashik. And it just happened like I just got hired, I believe maybe like one month or two months. So I didn't know anything. I was just like brand new trainee. So I went and I said, well, this is my uh, plan. I'm planning to go to Germany to visit some friends, but I need your signature that I don't know any state secrets at this place. He just said, nope, you are not allowed to travel to any other countries. Even I was like brand new trainee that didn't know anything. So I my and that trip never happened. I couldn't get a signature of that dude. Uh, without that signature, I couldn't get the passport for traveling. And even didn't have a chance to go to the German embassy to apply for visa. This is how complicated the whole process was. You go collect all these documents. Then you go get your passport. Then you go with that invitation and your pa new passport to German embassy to apply for visa. Uh, yeah, and that was complete fiasco. I was so disappointed. I think that was the first time I was like a really, really mad at the Soviet bureaucracy and the Soviet laws. And I got this flavor of this society that limits uh, people and their movements and their, you know, decisions to go somewhere. But as I mentioned many times, otherwise I had a good time because I had a great childhood good education i get the free college degree and by the time when soviet union collapsed i was only 20 so was, i was young i was ready to experience new challenges you know i studied english by myself because i realized with the all these changes in soviet union or soviet union being gone and uh, borders open up I might get a better job if I have, uh, you know, my degree in English. And as a result of that, I got into an exchange program and came to America in 1995. So things work out for me really well. So I have no anger, no complaints. But then, of course, if you look back, like at the life of my grandfather, Sergei, I already told you a story about him. You know, he was prisoner of war in Germany. Then... He almost died in a Soviet labor camp where he was sent as a punishment for betraying the motherland because Comrade Stalin announced that he doesn't have prisoners of war, he has only traitors. And then you look at America, like at McCain, late uh, Senator McCain, he was a prisoner of war in Vietnam and he almost uh, became a president of the United States. You know, he was running for president of the United States. So kind of if you look at big picture, you know, still, I don't have any anger, but, like, I feel bad for my grandparents because they had really a hard life. I had it pretty easy. I was born in the big city in the capital of Ukraine at that time. Uh, my family wasn't ideal, but I had everything was okay. Uh, so, yeah, big picture. Some people could be angry, I guess, but I guess the older people and maybe more, like, artistic, uh, creative type that felt... Uh, under control, under a lot of limitations. They maybe could be angry, I guess, but in my case, uh, everything worked out just fine. And another point, like, you know, sometimes people are, now that they're so proud to be an American, or they're proud to be Russian, uh, or whatever, you know, proud to be Soviet. And the way I look at it, or, you know, I'm proud to be a guy, you never had a choice before you were born, like there was no paperwork to fill. Like, okay, I would like to be born in the United States, in Michigan, or 
before. I would like to be born in the Soviet Union. I would like to be born as a cute boy. Uh, so for me, I don't know. It's just my personal opinion. I really don't think people should be proud of something that had nothing to do with them. Like, you just happen to be born in America. So it's like, oh, I'm proud American. Like, well, it's not like you made a choice. I would like to be born American. You know, you could be proud of your achievements. Like, hey, this is what I did in my life. I got this company going or, you know, I became a champion or I became something like, you know, your personal achievements, but just something you happen to be that person on that location. I really don't see point to be proud of. You know, you can be proud of your children if you help them to become something also, you know, super successful or whatever. But like, I cannot really say, you know, if, for example, my father is really successful. I kind of like, I cannot personally say, oh, I'm so proud because I really didn't do anything to help him to be successful. But, you know, it's just my logic. Well, I'm interested about your uh, story, about your opinion on that. But I hope you like this video. As always, please don't forget to put likes. It helps my videos to go up in the YouTube search. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet.